Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at how to create a lightsaber in Unity. So I'm using the HDRP, the High Definition Render Pipeline project. So when you're creating a new project in Unity, there's several presets you can choose. One of them is 3D. You don't want to choose that one. You want to choose what is at least currently the next little one in line. And it says HDRP or High Definition RP, depending on what version of Unity you're using. So you want to select that. If you choose the standard 3D, then you have to install post-processing. And what I'm going to show you really wouldn't work. So there's a separate tutorial already showing you how to apply a glow effect if you're going to use that. Because like I said, you install post-processing and it's a separate uh, procedure. So in this we're going to use HDRP. As far as the scene itself, all it is is file and then new scene. And then I chose basic indoor scene. That's it. I just moved the spotlight out of the way since we don't need it. I could delete it, but we'll keep it for the moment. So basically two things are going to make this work. One, a particle system for the blade, and then two, a material that has an emission to it. So game object, effect, particle system. Let's bring this front and center. So zero, zero, zero for the position. And obviously the shape is totally wrong because it defaults to cone. So down here in shape, you want to change this to mesh. And suddenly you already have a nice straight blade. Now, depending on how long you want this to be, you would change that using start lifetime. So since the bottom is the origin, the particles start here and travel out. So the longer the lifetime, the further out this will go. The shorter lifetime, the shorter this will be. So if I take start lifetime and change it to two from five, okay, so that's how you're going to make this shorter or longer. Now, what we want to do is we're, not at, we're going to add an emission material. So right click, create, and we're going to choose material. We'll call this blue. And this, I, if I didn't mention already, this is just a circle. It's just drawn in an external paint program. There's nothing special about it other than the fact that the background is clear. That's the alpha channel. So it's not a solid colored background. It is a clear translucent background. So we're going to click on that material that we just created. We need to change the surface type to transparent because, again, we want that background to be transparent. And now for surface in, uh, inputs, we'll put the circle there. And then for emission air inputs, we'll put the circle there as well. And we will use emission intensity. Now, just uh, as a brief aside, if you are using the regular 3D project and not HDRP, emission intensity would not be here. It would be right in the color selector, which is where we're about to go. So again, the, the UI looks really different if you're using the standard 3D project. Okay, so we're going to click on emissive color. We're going to change this to blue. And the emission would be down here. The intensity, I should say, would be down here in the standard 3D project. OK. And so we have our emission color, emission intensity. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to the blade already, even though it's not going to look right, because just looking numerically at emission intensity tells me nothing. I want to see the effect. So we click on particle system, we expand renderer, we put the blue where it says material, and now you can start to see the way that it looks. Okay. So what we want to do, a few things to make this look right. So we need to go back to our material. Like I said, we need to add a glow to it. So we're going to take the emission intensity here and let's make this say 50. Already has a nice glow to it, kind of like a neon light or like a fluorescent light. And this is really arbitrary what you want, say 100 or 200. And the ex exposure weight can also affect this. It can help like dampen it a little bit. I'm not going to mess around with that. And then you can see how it's going to run. Now you can see kind of a ridge and you don't want that. So there's a few things we can do to fix that. So if we go to emission and we change the emission amount, let's change that to say 20. Suddenly that clears it up and you even have a nice little pulse at the end there. 
And if you want, you can adjust a few things like you could make, say, the start size a little bit smaller. So like, say, 0.4. And then that means you'd have to increase the emission because since it's smaller then to get the same density, you would need to use more. OK, and it makes the ending look a little bit more stable. So again, all depends on the look that you're looking for. So let's do something in between. Let's do like 6.6. .6. And you have basically already have your lightsaber. Now, the thing is, this has a glow, but it really doesn't cast light per se. So under here, there's a plane. OK, and actually, let's make that plane a little bit bigger. So let's make that plane, say, 5 by 5. So this isn't casting any light. So even if like we rotate this, oops, sorry. So even if we rotate this, not seeing anything, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to make this the parent object. And as a child, we're going to add a light. So we're going to add game object, light. And you can do, there's a lot of ways you can go about this. You could do, say, a spotlight. And let's go to 0, 0, 0 raise this up a bit okay so you can see it's lighting what's underneath it so we're going to do is we're going to make this a square so for general type okay spotlight all right shape is cone so you can do things like change this to box so it gives you like a square size and then you're just going to change the size of x or y depending on how you want to rotate this so say we make this like 10 Okay, and now you take that and you child it to the particle system. All I did was just drag and drop it on top of it. And now you can rotate this around. So if we rotate the light. So now right now it's shining on the blade. Now we'll just put it under the blade so we don't have the additional effect. And I can see it's not nearly the length of the blade. So would make this say 30 and then raise it up. Yeah, let's make that like 28. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but you want it to be about the length of the blade. OK, so now if I rotate this. Now you can see it is indeed cast in light on the surface underneath it. And then if you want, you could change the color of the spotlight. So you can make this, let's see, I think if we change the filter, it makes it a little bit more bluish. Yes, it does. So you could do that. And that way it has, it casts that color onto the surface beneath it. That looks a little bit more aqua than blue, but the, but the darker blue I went, the uh, the less glow it looked like it had. So uh, gonna have to just play around with that to get the right color that you want. Uh, actually, this is also kind of on the aqua side of things. So, but again, it you know the darker you get, the less glow it's going to have. Somewhere in there. And just like that, you have a lightsaber that casts a uh, uh that actually is a light source by attaching a light to it now what you can do sorry i rotated the wrong object you can now rinse and repeat because if you got a blue one then obviously you need a red one as well so copy paste and yeah, you could add the handle there too if you really wanted it i'm not too worried about it because obviously you, you can just model a handle in any 3D model and application. You don't need me to show you that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take blue, control D to make a duplicate, and we'll call this red. And if I don't mess this up, what we want to do is we want to change the emission color to red. All right. Now, this red light, what's going to be the red lightsaber, sorry, this one here, it doesn't have, um, it's still using this material, so we need to swap the material. 
So we're going to come down here to the renderer and where we have the blue, we're going to replace it with red. And there you go. Actually, I think the red looks a little bit better. And now you have light and dark and you can just make other colors if you want. You want a purple, you want a green, uh, and you can just rinse and repeat. And like I said, as, as far as uh, adding a handle, I mean, you could do the built-in uh, game object, 3D object. You could add like a capsule. You could add um, the cylinder. And again, you could make a handle in a 3D uh, application and import it in. I think the blade is really what people would care about because like I said, the, the modeling of the handle is not a, a big deal. So I think that's about it for this tutorial. I believe that uh, that's all that I really wanted to show you. And uh, this was kind of spur of the moment. So my apologies if I fumbled a bit, but I thought this would be a nice kind of whimsical thing uh, to show you. And uh, obviously you can't call it a lightsaber in your project. Obviously that, you know, that's uh, copyright and all that, but obviously you could have some kind of variation of that, some kind of glowing weapon. And again, like I said, you could also use this for other things. You could use this for like neon lights. You could use this for Larson lights and things like that. And as you saw, you didn't necessarily even have to have the glow um, uh, attached to the material itself that when you had the light shine onto it, that alone added an emissive look to it. So I think that's about it. So I hope that you had this, uh, you you found this helpful. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to see, please leave a comment so I know. And uh, please enjoy the rest of your night.